God bless you. May his love be with you today. Uh, God is good. God is good. And uh, we're here to share with you the Word of God. And I want to go to a great passage of the Word of God, which is 1 Timothy, uh, chapter 1. And I want to pick out a few verses here. And it says, Knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly, for sinners, for unruly and profane, murderers uh, of fathers, murderers of mothers, or of manslayers, or for, or for, for home homemongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, or ma man-stealers, for liars, for purged persons, and if there be any other that is contrary to sound doctrine. So here, uh, Paul's talking about the law of God and the use of the law. Some people are getting very clever and sophisticated about the law. But uh, Paul is saying that the law convicts us of sin. The law convicts us of sin. And uh, I just want to read the Ten Commandments to you. The law convicts of sin. It says in Exodus 20, it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What do you worship today? What are you worshipping? You should have no other gods before me. You shouldn't worship your car. You shouldn't worship your house. You shouldn't worship anything but the true and living God. What are you worshipping today? What do you adore? Do you... Do you adore your iPhone 10 that's coming out? What do you adore? Your iPhone 10? Your new iPhone? Is that what you worship today? Your Instagram? What is it that you worship? It says, have no, thou shalt have no other gods before me. God bless you, bro. But Jesus died for you, bro. He gave his life. But it says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And we've made a God out of money, we've made a God out of sex, we've made a God out of Facebook, we've made a God out of Instagram, we've made a God out of beauty cool. You know, you go and get your hair done, and that's like your God. You spend £40 on getting your hair do, your hair done, and that's like become your God. Makeup, you get your fingers done, you get your nails done, and that becomes your God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You shouldn't worship your wacky backy. You shouldn't worship your, your spice, your crack cocaine. You shouldn't worship anything but God. God is number one to be worshipped. What are you worshipping today? What is it is that you worship more than God? That has become your idol. And the commandment says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 3 thou shalt have no other gods before me what has become your god do you worship money do you worship sex do you worship your house do you worship yourself what is it that you're worshiping thou shalt have no other gods before me what is do i speak he hebrew no Yes. Do you believe Jesus? Do you believe Jesus, bro? Do you believe him? Like I said, thou shalt have no other gods. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 3, you see, there's only one God. There's not 10 gods. There's not 20 gods. There's not your postmodern God where you say, oh, you can worship whatever you want. There's only one God. One true and living God is overall, is the one and true Yahweh, is the living and true God, the mighty God, the living God, the God who created the heavens of the universe. This is the God to worship, this is the God to adore, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty who was and is to come, to worship the true and living God. But if we stoop down to drugs, we worship that. If we worship our wacky backy, our money, our trainers, our gaming, worship God. Worship God. God. The only true God is to be worshipped. 
Who are you worshipping today? What are you worshipping today? Are you worshipping the true and living God that is only one God? So what have you put in this place? What have you brought down? What are you worshipping today? Are you worshipping your trainers? Are you worshipping your nice hairdo that you spent 40 quid on? Are you worshipping your trainers where you spent 90 pounds on? Are you worshipping your gaming? Are you worshipping your drugs? Are you worshipping your pension? Worshipping your house? Worshipping anything in this life but you're not worshipping the true and living God. You're breaking the tenth, first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 3. The idea that all gods are the same is a lie. The idea that all religions are the same is a lie. The idea that we all worship the same God is a lie. There's only one true living God. That is the God of the Old Testament and the God of the Bible. That's the only God that exists. That's the only true God. God is not an idol that you put on your on your on your front porch like a big fat Buddha on your front porch you know what I mean God isn't like that he's not an image God is the living God the entire almighty God thou shall have no other gods before me what are you worshipping bro what are you worshipping sisters only one true God so why are you going on the tarot cards that's worshipping a that's worshipping Satan. Why are you trying to contact the dead in spiritism? That's worshipping the spirits. That's not worshipping the true and living God. You have to worship the true and living God, my friend. So every single one of us, if we're not worshipping the true and living God, we break the Ten Commandments. We break the First Commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 3. But in this book, in in Timothy, Timothy chapter 1, it says unto Timothy, my own son, in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Grace, peace. We might, you might have worshipped a false god. You might have worshipped something that's false. But there's grace and there's mercy and there's love. There's grace and there's mercy and there's love for you. Mercy, grace and love. The grace of God forgives you. The grace of God covers your mistakes because of Jesus. You see, Jesus, Jesus shed his blood and Jesus died to cover your sin. Jesus died in your place to cover your sin. I'll prove it to you in the Bible. It says here, it says, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who had enabled me, that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. It was both for a blasphemer and a persecutor, an injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Notice this. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief. Did you hear what Paul said? Did you hear what Paul said? Paul said, worthy is the saying that Christ Jesus came to save sinners. Why did Jesus come? Why did he come to the earth? Was it to set up a new supermarket? Was it, was it, did he come to set up a new shopping center? Did he come to give you a nice pair of trainers? Did he come to give you a nice hairdo? What did Jesus come for? Why did Jesus come? Jesus Christ came to save sinners. He came to save, to save sinners. That's why he came. Jesus came to save sinners, and Paul said, I am the chief. That's why he came. He said, Jay, I'm not a sinner. You are a sinner. I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. Sinners is breaking the law of God. You shall have no other gods before me. We all break those commandments. We're all sinners. Don't say you're not a sinner. You are a sinner. But Jesus Christ came to save sinners. Came to save sinners by dying for your sin. 
sin is rebellion against God. Sin is rebellion against the Lord of God. Sin. Okay, okay, okay. Sin is rebellion against God. Jesus Christ came to save sinners, of which I am the chief of Paul. To save sinners. You want to get saved today, if you want to know salvation, if you want to be right with God, you've got to acknowledge you're a sinner. If you say, Jay, I don't need God, Jay, I'm not a sinner, then my friend, you're never going to find forgiveness, you're never going to find salvation. The first road to salvation, the first road to being in heaven, is to be honest with ourselves and to acknowledge that we are sinners. You have to acknowledge that you have broken the commandments of God. You have to acknowledge that you are a sinner before you can be forgiven. You cannot be proud. You cannot be arrogant. We are all sinners. We are all sinners. It says here, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Exodus 24. Thou shalt not make any graven image. You shall not make any graven image. There are people that bow down to a stone and they kiss a stone. It says, Thou shalt not have any graven image. There are people that bow down to idols. It says, Thou shalt not have any graven image. There are some people that bow, to, bow down to pictures of pop stars. Thou shalt not have any graven image. There's some people that bow down to their own intellect and worship their own intellect. Thou shalt have no other, thou shalt not worship any image. You shalt not worship any image or bow down to any image. Thou shalt not make any graven image. And yet secular world is full of graven images. We worship Lady Gaga, we worship Ed Sheeran and we bow down to their images. We worship the new film, the new X game. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. What image are you worshipping today? What image are you bowing down to? Are you bowing down to the pound sign? Are you bowing down to the sex? What image have you created that you are bowing down in your life? Are you bowing down to the image of drugs? Are you bowing down to the image of yourself? Are you bowing down to the image of your own pride? What is the image that you are worshipping today? What is the image that you have set up? And you have set up above God and you worship that image above God. What image are you worshipping today? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Exodus 20 verse 7. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Have you used Jesus' name as a swear word? Have you used Jesus' name as a swear word? Has Jesus' name been a curse word upon your lips? It says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You shall not mock God. You shall not laugh at God. You shall not mock His name. You should not dishonor His name. You should honor His name. You should glorify His name. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord God in vain. But have you used Jesus' name as a swear word? Have you swore using a swear word against God or used Jesus' name as a swear word? Thou shalt not do it, says the Bible. You shall not use the Lord's name in vain. You shall honor his name. You shall bring glory to his name. You shall lift up the name of Yahweh. You shall lift up the name of Jesus Christ. You will not mock him. You will not dishonor him. You will not laugh at him. You will not do anything against his name his name is to be honored so how dare you swear using jesus as a swear word thou shalt not take the name of the lord god in vain so why have you been swearing why have you been swearing using the name of jesus using the name of god as a swear word remember the sabbath day to keep it holy the Sabbath day, when God created the world, He rested. The Sabbath day, to keep holy. Do you keep the Sabbath day holy? Is the Sabbath day kept holy for you? Or is it just any other day? The Sabbath day. Do you keep the Sabbath day holy? 
to God, to worship God, to honor God, or are you just doing any old day? It's a day. It's because you lack honor for God. We, we all lack honor for God. We all lack His glory. Honor thy father and mother. Do you honor your father and mother? Do you honor your father and mother? We confess our sin. If we do not honor our mother, do you honor your father and mother? Do you show them the love of God? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Have you been killing somebody? Have you murdered someone with your lips? You've, you've assassinated them with your lips. You've said terrible things and made them cry with your lips. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. That means gossiping. That means don't gossip. Don't backbite. Don't make your life into a little Jeremy Kyle show. Thou shalt not gossip. Thou shalt not kill. Don't be gossiping. Thou shalt not steal. No stealing. Have you been stealing from the tax man? Who's been stealing from the tax man? Come on now, put your hand up, naughty naughty. Who's been stealing from the tax man? Come on. Who's been stealing from the tax man? Thou shalt not steal. Have you been stealing? What have you been stealing from the government? Thou shalt not steal. Who's been stealing from the tax man? Come on, put your hand up. Some of you have been stealing from the tax man. Thou shalt not steal. Pay your taxes. Don't be trying to con somebody. Don't be trying to con the government. Don't be trying to... Don't be trying to con the government. Pay your taxes. Thou shalt not steal. Pay your taxes. Who's been stealing from the tax man? Own up. Who's been stealing from the tax man? I stole from the tax man. Well, Jesus loves you and died for you, brother. Jesus loves you and died for you. Thou shalt not steal. Who's been stealing from the tax man? Come on, own up. Own up. Who's been fiddling the electric bill, the gas bill? Pardon? You both. You both. <laughs> I own up. <laughs> uh, who's been stealing? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal, says the Bible. Thou shalt not steal. I'm going to pamp on this for a minute. Who's been stealing? Who's been stealing from the taxman? Who's been stealing from the taxman? Who's been stealing from work? Have you been stealing from work? Have you stolen from work? You stole stuff that is not yours from work. Thou shalt not steal. You sinner, if you've been stealing from your workplace, thou shalt not steal. You're a sinner, if you've been stealing, thou shalt not steal. God bless you, brother. Yeah, right. yeah, we'll... right. God bless you, bro. Take care. Of it. Take care. God bless you. Take care. God bless you, bro. God bless you. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't be looking at a woman. Don't be sleeping with a woman unless you're married. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You get your crumpet when you're married. You get your crumpet when you're married, not before. You get your crumpet when you're married. You get your crumpet when you're married. But before you're married, you don't get your crumpet. Yeah? Thou shalt not commit adultery. So come to Jesus and get forgiveness if you've slept with someone. Without, well you need Jesus bro, you need his love. But you need his love bro, you need his love. But you need forgiveness, you need forgiveness. But why did Jesus, 
But why did why did Jesus come? When, when Christ came and he was dying on the cross, do you know when he died on that cross? You know what he was doing? Have you ever lied? Obviously. Yeah. So when Christ was dying on the cross, any lies that you've done, he's taking your punishment for you, for your lies, for your lies. I don't even know what he's talking about. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. A guy who's stoned to death. No, he didn't. In a Muslim country. No, Jesus, the Son of God. Here, 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 here. This one, here, this one. Jesus actually is a Muslim. No, Jesus is, is the Son of God. See that there, John 3, 16. Yes, yes, but look, John 3, 16, no, I mean, Jesus is not Muslim, John 3, 16, brother, brother, look, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Are you trying to tell me that Jesus Christ isn't a Muslim? He's not a Muslim, no. He was born Jesus was a, Jesus was a Jew. He was born in Bethlehem. Yeah, but he was a Jew. A Jewish Muslim. No, he wasn't a Jewish Muslim, he was a Jew, bro. He was a Jew and he was a son of God. And he died for you. He gave his life for you. So, what have you got that Jesus can't give you? Hey, you can hug me anytime. I don't love you. I just think you're a little sad. Why am I sad? Because you can't give me Jesus Christ in a Muslim country or in a Muslim country. He is Muslim. You know Israel? Israel. He was born in Israel. Israel is Jewish. Bro, not in Britain. He's not a white fellow, is he? No, but he's Jewish, bro. He's not a white fellow. He's Jewish. But he's not a white fellow. You lost fella. the argument, bro. He's Jewish. But Jesus is not a white fellow, is he? He was Jewish. And he died hey, on that cross. Is Jesus a white fellow? Was he a Muslim? Is Jesus, Jesus. He doesn't want to say. He's just. <coughs> Wait for it. I think he can't, he can't be a Muslim because, because Muslims only came 600 years after. So what is he, a Muslim? No, he was, he was, he was a Jew. So he's a Jewish Muslim. No, he can't, no. he can't be a Jewish Muslim. My friend, my friend, my friend, come here, bro. Listen, listen, he died on that cross for you, and that's what you need, my friend. You need his love. So it says here, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. In other words, only sex in marriage is right. Any sex outside of marriage, according to the Bible, is wrong. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That means you shouldn't lie about other people. Thou shalt not bear false witness. If you're in court and you're lying, that's wrong. You have to tell the truth when you're in court. Thou shalt not covet. Meaning, thou shalt not covet means you shouldn't desire somebody's house, somebody's wife, somebody's husband, somebody's things, you should just leave and worship God. Thou shalt not covet. So all these are the Ten Commandments and we all break these commandments. But Jesus has came to save us. When we make mistakes, when we fail, when we break the commandments of God, Jesus came and died on our behalf. He died on that cross. And he took the punishment for our sin. He took the punishment and died on our behalf and gave his life for us. That's why Christ died. He took the punishment for us. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And son of God died on that cross. He died on that cross and he gave his life that you may have life that you may have peace and this is a way to heaven this is the way to heaven this is the way to get saved to know that Christ died on the cross to know that he took your punishment to know that he saves you to know that Christ gave his life and Christ died on your behalf and Christ loved you and Christ died on that cross and shame if there's any shame in your life, anything that you're ashamed of, then Christ wipes it away with his blood. You don't have to be ashamed of anything. If you come to Jesus, he wipes away the shame. He wipes away the shame. If there's anything in your life that you're ashamed of, Jesus wipes it away with his blood. 
He wipes it away for he died for you. If there's any shame in your life, anything that you're ashamed of, Jesus forgives you if you go to him. Jesus wipes it away for you. Anything that you're ashamed of, Jesus forgives you if you go to him. What shame is in your life? What shame do you carry today? Any shame that you carry, anything that you're ashamed of, Jesus wipes it away with his blood, cleanses you with his blood, washes you with his blood, forgives you by his blood. That blood will wash away any shame in your life, wash away anything that you know is not right, will forgive you. It says the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And in 1 Timothy, says charge I commit unto thee son Timothy according to the prophecies which went before on thee thou by them might war a good warfare we have to war a good warfare we have to go on we have to serve God live for God warfare it's never going to be easy in this life if you give your life to Jesus it's going to be a battle being a Christian is not easy being a Christian you will be persecuted you will be spat at, you will be laughed at, you will be mocked as a Christian. But we have to war a way to warfare. We have to continue to go forward in love. To love our enemies, to serve God, to feed on his word, to pray. But if you become a Christian, you will be persecuted. If you become a Christian, you'll be laughed at. If you become a Christian, you'll be mocked. If you become a Christian, you'll be sidelined in society. So when you follow Jesus, it's not the easy option, it's a hard option. But if you follow him, you'll be laughed at, you'll be mocked at, you'll be humiliated. But he's worth following. He's worth following. If you follow Jesus, they'll call you Bible basher. They'll laugh at you, they'll mock you, they'll even punch you, they'll even lock you up in prison one day. They're already doing it around the world. You'll even lose your life in some places. So being a Christian is not easy. Paul, Jesus says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for my sake. It's normal Christian life to be persecuted. So if you choose to follow Jesus, if you choose to go the way of Jesus, it's no easy option. He paid everything for you on that cross, but you have to get laid down your life for him. You have to be willing to give all for him and take the insults, take the mocking, take the humiliation, take the laughing and the mocking. It's not easy being a Christian, but you will be persecuted. You will be mocked, you will be laughed at, you will be insulted. But you must go forward and wage a warfare. In other words, go forward and live for Jesus. Our, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power in the age to come. And we fight with truth. The belt of truth, the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Word of God. But if you follow Jesus, you decide to follow Jesus, it's not an easy option. You will be persecuted. Do you know if you do it, you go home tonight. I, I challenge you, go home tonight and type in Christian martyrs. Tens of millions of martyrs have died as Christians in the 20th century. Tens of millions of Christians have died as martyrs in the 20th century. If you follow Jesus, you're going to get persecuted, you're going to get laughed at, you're going to get mocked at. There's no, there's no protection for Christians. You will be persecuted as a Christian. But follow him. Follow him. He's worth following. He's worth following. Wage a good warfare for the Lord. Serve the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. Lay down your life for the Lord. Be a Timothy. Be a woman of God and a man of God and lay down your life and don't don't bother about the laughing, don't bother about the mocking, don't bother that they call you a Bible basher, don't bother that they humiliate you. Go forward and trust the Lord and follow Him and serve Him and live for Him and stand on the Word of God. Be a man of God, be a woman of God and stand on the pure Word of God today. Do not water down the Gospel, do not water down the Bible, do not water down the truth. But be a woman of God and a, a, a man of God and stand up for the Word of God, stand up for the Gospel. Make a stand in your generation. Make a stand and stand up for the word, stand up for the truth. And wage a good warfare in Jesus Christ. And stand in his word and stand in the truth of God. Stand on that truth, stand on that word today. In this generation, 
Don't water down the word. Don't compromise. Be a person of honesty and integrity and stand for the word of God. Timothy was a young man and he gave his life to the word of God. Be a man and be a woman that gives their life to the word of God. Don't compromise in this age. The secular age is gone. The secular age is dying. The secular age is crumbling. The secular age is going nowhere and going nowhere fast. So don't put your trust in this secular age. Don't put your trust in this age. This age is crumbling before your very eyes. It is collapsing before your very eyes. And you must stand on the one thing that will stand in this day. And that is the word of God. That is the only rock to stand on, the pure word of God. So stand, stand, stand and be a man of God. Stand and be a woman of God. Stand on the truth. Stand on the Bible, stand on the gospel, that Christ died. Stand. Stand for the truth. Don't wobble. Don't wobble. Don't wobble, 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 wobble. Don't compromise. Don't water the truth down. But stand. Stand on the Bible. Stand on the word of God. Stand strong. Stand tall. Stand like a man. Stand like a woman. And stand in this day. Make your stand for Jesus. Make your stand for the Lord and proclaim the truth, proclaim the Bible, proclaim the word of God. Let the truth be proclaimed, let the word of God be proclaimed, let the Bible out. Let the Bible out and teach it in the schools, teach it in the colleges, teach it in the universities, teach it in Parliament and unleash the word of God. Unleash the word of God. Come and debate me bro. Unleash the word of God in the cities, in the towns, in the villages and be a woman of God, be a man of God and proclaim the truth in this generation that is dying dying with lies, lies propagated lies on the television, lies in the politicians there's lies everywhere being propagated lies, lies, lies everywhere and the only place you can find truth is the word of God, the Bible here is where the truth is. Here is the truth, the word of God. Here is the truth that you need. Here is the food from heaven, food from the living God, the Bible. Salvation in the Bible. Power in the Bible. Hope in the Bible. The Bible and the Jesus of the Bible. Heaven on earth, life everlasting, joy, power, peace. All that you need is in Him. All that you could ever have is in Him. God is in Him. Life is in Him. And we're living on a dung heap of the earth. We're feeding on materialism, feeding on secularism. And it's like a cancer destroying the soul, shivering the soul.